Hello, Zoo Crew, and welcome to another Modern Zoo Guide, Matchup Guide, Analysis, whatever you want to call it. Today it's going to be presented to you by Red, Blue, Splashing Black Delver. Red, Blue, Splashing Black Delver is not that much different than, than just Red, Blue Delver. Uh, the only difference is really back in the heyday of Red, Blue Delver. It's using Treasure Cruise to gain a stupid amount of... Um, of draw, uh, but nowadays it doesn't have that. Instead, it still has delve spells, so it's pretty much the same deck. Now, instead of delving for extra draw spells, it has delve for uh, a one mana five five fish, uh, and occasionally a a banana man, Tassiker himself. Um, so you, if you do not know what delver is, because uh, delver does jump up and down on the tier lists very often going from tier 1 to tier 2 to tier disappeared to tier 1 again just within months um, Delver is a 1 mana creature who is a 1-1 one, one, and if you reveal an instant or sorcery he flips and becomes a 3-2 the whole deck is sort of built around Delver although it generally does not have to include Delver but sometimes does and um it, it used basically instants and sorcery spells to fuel something bigger. In the case of the Delve guys, uh, it's kind of ironic that there's Delve creatures within a, a deck called Delver of Secrets. Um, the the idea is that uh, the Delve guys are going to be eating those instant sorceries that you're using stuff like uh, Thought... Scour, as well as stuff like Grataxian Probe, Serum Visions, occasionally Slight of Hand, Lightning Bolt, uh, aka a bunch of one mana spells that are very fast and are able to throw crap in the graveyard to delve them away and then have very, very fast um, Tassiker or a um, Gormag Angler, depending on, on sort of which way they're leaning. Um, regardless of that, it also uses incidents and sorcery spells with the lovely, lovely modern staple, Snapcaster Mage. Uh, by flashing back pretty much everything that it, it has in it, giving it more of a flexible sideboard as well. Um, and then it also uses Young Pyromancer to uh, make an army out of it. So it, it uses instants and sorceries. The whole deck, if you really want to uh, boil it down, is uh, basically make your deck about ooh, almost half, if not slightly a little more, instants and sorceries and then have ways to abuse it but from different angles of attack so Delver directly flips because of the um, the instants and sorceries Snapcaster uses the instants and sorceries that were in your graveyard to do more damage uh, Young Pyromancer doesn't need to reveal it or or even um, or even have it in its graveyard to do it, or, or resolve to do its thing all you gotta do is cast and you get the tokens off of um, the young pyromancer and then Tasker as well as the Gorbank Engler are able to just eat the cheap instants and sorceries that you've been using that are now in your yard, uh, as well as lands. So the whole whole deck is sort of built around this um, engine that can that can be uh, done with these cheap spells and fetch lands uh, and abusing sort of the the efficiency of it. Now, where are zoo players? how do we beat this deck that is a tempo deck and that's what it wants to do is it wants to have a present a clock and then have enough key disruption to um, beat you well we're gonna have this complex conversation then about what is tempo you could to understand how to beat tempo you need to understand how to beat it if I were to say lightning bolt your creature um, that you played I'm winning in tempo not because I have used a card to get rid of your card but let's say your creature cost three mana I used one mana to get rid of your creature that cost three mana you are not down a card you are down a card and three mana while I'm down a card and one mana I've been more efficient than you therefore I have a better tempo there's other ways that you can do this too if I draw a extra card off of some ability let's say uh, on one of my creatures that already is in play and it didn't cost me anything to do it I just it, it happens already well cool then I'm up a card maybe I didn't draw a, a card maybe I just snapcaster flashed it back well then I do I am up virtually card advantage I'm up one tempo likewise uh, the tempo game replies to you too if I were to use a thought seize and get rid of one of your cards you are down one card therefore you are down one tempo while I'm up one 
So, and then that did not necessarily that I'm up one, but now I'm virtually up one. I know it's a little complex, and if you guys have any questions about it, you can always comment in the, the things below. But that's how a tempo deck functions. So your real idea as an aggro deck is to either A, not let them tempo you, aka make sure all of their spells that they cast either one for one, um, like a lightning bolt on a, um, on a uh, wild nacoddle, is parity. There's no tempo gained or tempo lost in that. It was just that's that's what happens there. So you want to make sure that you are either not losing tempo on your end, but you're also not letting them gain tempo on their end. So that's that's your, your key way to do it. So you're either going to do that as an aggro deck, or or you're going to go ahead and go out of your way to make sure they lose tempo. So even when they do things to gain tempo, they are only putting themselves at parity when they're gaining tempo. They're not actually gaining tempo. They were already negative one tempo, and you gained it back. Let's talk about that one, because that one's actually a little complicated. What is the best way to do that, you might ask? And the best way to do that really is a simple answer, and it seems like I've always been saying this often. But Thalia is our girl. She's our sideboard girl. In Legacy, she's a main board girl. And she does a lot of that, just by simply taxing. Uh, one more on it. The minute they cast two of their cheap spells, which are now inefficient spells, um, to get rid of Thalia, maybe they they use basically Thalia's tax two mana or more. She's done her job, mm -hmm. um, and she's going to be one of the primary ways that you kill kill um, Delver. There's going to be some other ways that you can kill Delver, and some good ways to kill Delver. Let's start at the beginning, like I like to do, and just go through it all. Something to talk about lands, which because I don't normally talk about lands. Uh, Main lands. That's going to be stuff like uh, Stirring Wildwood, as well as Raging Ravine and Treetop Village. These guys are very good in the matchup because, uh, being that it's it's on your turn, you activate them. Uh, they also have cards that might not kill them. Uh, in in response to talking about things like that, for Stirring Wildwood, it doesn't get bolted out. Uh, for um, Raging Ravine after one attack does not get bolted out. So that's going to be uh, huge on your end. Also, it can't be things like Coligan commanded out. And they can't mana leak these guys. So you could, if they were just going, they were had a heavy, heavy removal hand, you could just Raging Ravine them to death. That's a very realistic thing once, once they've wasted, especially once they've wasted all their tempo on all of your creatures. So you're not going, again, down on tempo by playing a Raging Ravine. You slightly lose a little speed because it comes into play tapped, but if it didn't matter already, it was turn four or something and you played it, then it was fine. Um, but it didn't cost you a card slot, and if they end up trying to remove it, actually, it, it, it sort of puts them at a tempo disadvantage, because that didn't take a card away from your hand. Um, moving right along, that's one of the key ways to do it, but there's also another way that you can do it in this deck, and that would be Sinjiri Step. Sinjiri Step, giving flying to you, or sorry, uh, by giving protection to your creature, you can actually avoid removal out. There are a lot of times that I will play against Delver, and I know they have a Terminate in hand. I, like, from years and years of playing, and I know how mana works, they've got a Terminate in their hand, they've got a Snap Bolt to block with. I know that, and I'll go ahead and not attack with my, my, um, my Knight of the Roll Quarry, and then I'll wait, and they'll go, all right, well then, I guess at end of turn, I'm going to go ahead and kill your your, uh, your Knight of the Roll Quarry, because they can't afford to wait, mind you, because they have to be efficient with their mana. So they'll do that, and then I'll go ahead and instant speed Sinjiri Step, and they'll be down a card, and it didn't affect me whatsoever. I lost out some on some damage, but I, wouldn't have, I wasn't going to get that damage in anyways if they killed it. Uh, another thing that I'll do occasionally with Knight of the Roll Quarry that you can do while we're still on the topic of lands is a Keswick Wolf Run. Keswick Wolf Run will... Um, I'll do the same thing uh, if I don't have the Sinjiri Step in my hand and I know they've got removal. I'll use my Knight to Keswick Wolf Run, and that way every card I draw from there on, as long as it's a creature, could be a threat that kills them. It's an end gamer. Mm -hmm. um, going right along, you can do a... Um, uh, <laughs> emptying the graveyard strategies against just straight uh, red blue delver it's not super good but now that more and more delve spells are here and the delve spells are probably here to stay it's still an all right strategy I don't think I dedicate an entire sideboard slot just to bring in graveyard hate against them but if I had something let's say that was awesome because it beat down while also killing the graveyard like a I don't 
some scavenging ooze or something like that, then absolutely I would I would bring in the scavenging ooze because it it does exactly what we want it to do. There is something to be said about about um selective dis or selective killing of graveyard that allow you to have some eke out some edge against them. Things like Relic of Progenitus is also pretty good here because you can actually get parity off of it by drawing a card. Uh, it still will lower out your 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 stuff. Uh, back in the day, they used to cast a lot more stuff from the graveyard, so the Graph Digger's Cage used to be good there. But yes, so Graveyard Hate um, is not super good on its own, and I don't think I'd bring in a Rest in Peace just to try to kill off a Delver deck. But if you, especially if, if you're not running Tarmgoy for Night of the Royal Quarry, then yeah, Rest in Peace can be a, a pretty good option there. I'd say Rest in Peace is probably more powerful than the other discard options other than um, Ooze. Ooze is, is the king of, of those options at that point. You probably don't want to bring in any sort of um, life gain effects, even though they are pretty uh, quick clocked, but things that will allow you to um, rebound spells to, or, or, or something like that to misdirection them, then that's actually pretty good here. And then we're going to talk about some a couple cards that you could do for that. Hollow is one of those kinds of cards. You can also play a... You can also play a Refraction Trap. It does basically the same thing, but it allows you to take any source, not just a red spell. Um, you also got Mutagenic Growth, which although it doesn't, um, doesn't, you know, fork or, or misdirection the spell, it will protect from bolts, and that is basically what you're doing, is you're protecting your creatures here um, from their removal spells, as well as probably your best choice finds a vast wood in that situation. All of these cards are there to um, basically protect your threats, so once you lay down a creature, protect it from the removal spell. They're going to have to, after sideboard, uh, run more creature disruption, and that's stuff that you can use against them. Um, as long, like, if you have a well-timed Vines of Asteroid, you can go turn one Wild Nacatl, um, and then turn two Vines of Vastwood with Kicker after they try to bolt it on your turn, and you've got them down to half-life. Uh, nowadays you don't want to run things like this, so rendering Volley is not going to be your greatest choice here in the damage out, out um, respects, but it used to be when it was American Delver, a very good card that you could do is rendering Volley or Combust. But you still have some choices here for extra um, creature damage that can hurt them. Gutshot doesn't really do all that you want it to do, but Electricery does a ton of work against Delver. You can go ahead and overload it and basically k clean up after Young Pyromancer. It kills off Delver, uh, non-flipped. It kills off uh, Snapcaster Mage. It kills off a bunch of uh, threats that they, they generally run, because again, they're so efficient, they're small. Another one that I used to use is Forked Bolt. Forked Bolt does quite a bit as well. It can kill a... Um, it can kill a Delver of Secrets. It feeds of Goyf, that's important to, to note. Uh, but it can also kill off a young Pyromancer and a Snapcaster at the same time. Things like that, or just put one to the face. Um, so those are some really good options on the um, the damage output spell. Another one is like Pillar Flame. You might have that against... Um, against things like Finks or Voice of Resurgence. Uh, but if you move a little higher up on the chain, then you have access to Pyroclasm, which is great. Pyroclasm will do a ton against them. It pretty much kills everything except for their Delve creatures. On the higher end, you've also got things like uh, Arc Trail, although I'm not a huge fan of Arc Trail. It still does work. Um, and then to top it off, uh, the cream de la cream of damage spells that you could possibly cast against them would be the wonderful, wonderful um, Volcanic Fallout. Can't be countered, deals two damage to each creature. That card was made to kill uh, fairies, and uh, the spiritual successor to fairies is Delver, basically. Uh, Delver is the better fairies deck, really. And, um, and, and, and that is going to be something that you're going to you're gonna want to run if you have it in the sideboard against uh, various things. When I was playing a ton of Delver, that was something that I packed up as a three of in the sideboard. Um, but that is not your only option when it comes to, to creature removal. You also have Grim Lavamancer. Grim Lavamancer will do a ton for you here. It's it's Remember we talked about um, tempo and how the more they're able to get use out of their cards, it gives them extra tempo. Well, you can fight back against that extra tempo. Imagine, again, imagine uh, it's it's almost like a uh, every time you gain a tempo, it takes away one of their tempos and it fizzles you both out to zero. Well, 
uh, Grim Lava Mancer is a great way to do that because it's repeatable. If they don't remove it right away, it can pretty much get rid of everything they possibly can do. It can also add up to to kill off the their big delved creatures with your other creatures attacked. Um, it's just he's sort of the king of repeatable um, creature removal, and he does a number versus uh, versus Delver. Now, depending, like I said earlier, that life gain wasn't super great against them. I'm still going to hold that position. But depending on uh, what type of deck they are, if they're straight just red, uh, red, um, let's say a, a red blue Delver, and that's it. Dragon Claw or um, Core Firewalker are good options for you to use. Arguably, Core Firewalker being better. Um, and the reason why that is, and, and it's less so now that they're not using as much red cards, but back when they were using a ton of red cards, including things like Forked Bolt, uh, even Gut Shots, um, Core Firewalker became a really, really good option. Uh, now that they're splashing black for for more efficient types of removal, Core Firewalker is a little less good, although it still doesn't die to Colgan Command, still doesn't die to Terminates. Uh, and if you have a Core Firewalker in your deck, and you don't have very much to side in against the Delver deck, I'd still side in the Core Firewalker and take out some of your two drops. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason being is, I mean, it's better than Kosali Pride Mage, and it doesn't die to Bolt, it doesn't die to Terminate, it doesn't die to Goligan's Command. Just by virtue of not dying super easily, it can be a pain in the ass for a uh, Delver deck to handle. You also have another uh, gra graveyard strategy kill um, that I'm not super a fan of, but it, it does a little bit of disruption, and that would be Dryad Militant. Dryad Militant, other than being beautiful because it was painted by Therese Nelson, um, is a good way to sort of just like clean up their yard if they don't have removal for it right away. Even if it, they do have removal for it, it's going to at least make sure a bolt doesn't go into their, their graveyard because of the weird ways that rules work, by the way. Bolt would go ahead and be exiled before Dryad Militant dies, and thus giving away the effect. Another option you could do is Spellskite. I'm not a huge fan of Spellskite in this matchup. Uh, I, I like Spellskite in other Grixis matchups, like even maybe in the control matchup, although I'm not a huge fan there, but most certainly in the twin matchup. Um, but it can do work if it can soak up a couple bolts. There's also some counter spells that you can do. I, I'm not going to tell you to side in negate. Uh, negate's not good in this matchup. It's too. It's like I said. It's it's too much mana. Yeah, and it's crazy to say two mana is too much mana, but it is too much mana uh, to to deny a bolt for two mana is not your your best option in the world, especially if if they um, that that bolt was against like an Akadol and was going to be meaningless and eventually anyways because they have some better blocker for it. Um, but things like spell pierce, uh, swan song to a lesser extent, but stubborn denial are going to be better better options for you here. There are some other cool ways to do what you need to do. Um, Searing Blaze will go ahead and two for one the opponent again, putting more tempo in your favor. Therefore, the need, need, them needing more tempo to gain back out of the hole of your tempo to try to not just be parity, but for them to gain tempo on you. Uh, Edelon the Great Rival will go ahead and just seal the deal on them. Uh, they dirtle around a little bit too much. They spend a lot of time uh, manipulating their library to make sure they have the best spells to always hit land drops. And along the Great Revels, just going to sign that 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 death warrant for them because every time they do something, it's going to hurt them, and that's they're never going to be able to dig themselves out of the tempo loss. They can bolt there, and that's fine, but it's still parity then because the bolt did um, took out one card. They lost one card, and you shocked them. So it's actually not even exactly parity. It's almost like a little bit of a half a tempo in your favor if they go ahead and trade the Edelon. But if Edelon sticks, it's over for them. As always, removal is good against them. So if you've got things like uh, Deflecting Palm, Lightning Helix, uh, Atarka's Command, which can also make your creatures dodge bolt, uh, Boros Charm, again, making your creatures dodge bolt, or giving Double Strike to take out a uh, bigger... Um, bigger blocker or something, uh, or Gore Clan rampaging over a blocker, abrupt decay on, on stuff, you're going to be pretty pretty well off. Removal, having just removal against them is not the worst option in the world. Likewise, you also have uh, Colagon, or uh, sorry, Dramaka's Command, which can be removal, and also... Uh, void out a bolt, so it's it, those those spells are pretty good. Some spells that are also really good against them is things like Voice of Resurgence. It doesn't let them do what they want to do, and that that 
like the, on a deck that needs to be efficient in order to survive and is, is walking a super tight th tight rope of um, being efficient and being not efficient uh, voice of resurgence doesn't allow that he doesn't let them play nice uh, your Quasali Pride Mages are going to be pretty bad against them, so you're going to want to side those those guys out if you have them in your main deck. Um, Aven Mind Sensor, while I, you could bring it in against the control matchups, against the other Grixis matchups, you don't want to bring it in against the twin matchups, because it's just, uh, I'm sorry, the Delver matchups, because it's just going to die a little bit too easily. You also, likewise, don't want to bring in Blood Moon or Magnus of the Moon, because they're efficient enough that they can get their basics and work around things, plus they have mana and, and, and um, and library manipulation, and they actually have a pretty good way to get rid of it occasionally. So you want to stay away from that. Actually, it's probably going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt them. Planeswalkers, if you can ever get them situated like Elspeth and um, and also Ajani, but more specifically uh, cards like um, like Domri Raid are going to be your best friends if you have them. If you have a one, even a one of Domri Raid, and that sticks, I I can guarantee you and honestly say, against any Delver matchup, no matter the colors, if I've landed a Domri Raid, I have not lost the game. And, and I'm telling you, I've, I've I've done this quite a bit. Domri Raid is that powerful. Uh, you will just gain so much value, and you will start to out card advantage them, be basically beating their tempo at a. You're just a better tempo deck, even with Domri Raid. Uh, and you have versatile constant removal, plus if you ever go off with your ultimate, they, they can't do anything about it. It's just end game. Uh, Fiery Justice also is a pretty good way to do some um, some creature removal for you. Uh, if Kitchen Finks, if you've got on the sideboard, is maybe worth putting in if you don't have a good 3-drop. Uh, it's just because it, it has the persist trigger, so it takes two removal spells to get rid of it. Um, worship, if you can land it and they're not playing white, you've got a pretty good chance of winning from there on out because they probably didn't side anything against you. And lastly, um, you got R Restoration Angel. Again, any way to make sure your creatures don't die easily to removal spells is great. And Siege Rhino, of course, is Siege Rhino, and it basically can kill off everything that they have except for their Delve creatures. Um, but you probably have a bolt to finish them off there. So there's your your uh, your choices for if you're playing the the Delve Delver deck. Uh, let's go ahead and see some games in action just so we can talk about them. So I'm gonna skip the game one that I lost. Um, I game one I lost due to just mana screw. I didn't I didn't have the um, I, I was stuck on two lands until about turn six, and then from then on I I, I didn't have a, a good chance at winning, but I did manage to give a, a good fight at least, uh, which shows that you actually are pretty favored against a, a Delver deck. Any blue deck you're generally favored against if you're playing Zoo. So we went straight into game two, and let's go ahead and see what happens here. Uh, we start out with a pretty good uh, hand here. We've got ourselves a Wild Nicotle and a Thalia. Even though our, our Nicotle gets bolted at first, that's still pretty good because we're at parity. He wasted one mana and one card to get rid of our one mana and 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 one card so it's actually it's still parody but the minute that we put down uh thalia he's gonna be he's gonna be hard pressed to win so he just went ahead and, and serum vision probably to find removal spell for thalia because it's that big of a thorn in their thigh their side again making any this deck run such a a, a tight uh line between being efficient and good and inefficient and just too small for the late game um uh, Thalia is gonna gonna seal the deal if they can, if it sticks. So uh, that's fine with me. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and, and just attack uh, with my my Thalia as well as cast the um, Knight of the Rolkery. Knight of the Rolkery again gonna be too bigger than a bolt for them. So even if they snap cast their bolt, this Knight of the Rolkery will eventually win the game. They do end up lightning bolting my Thalia away and having to pay two mana to do it, which means they paid two mana for the Serum Vision, so an extra tax of one, and an extra tax of one for that Lightning Bolt, meaning that was Thalia's casting cost. So, it's not parity. We've done, because Thalia did two damage before making them spend the same amount of mana to get rid of Thalia, as well as two cards. It was uh, above their uh, parity. We're currently winning in the tempo game, and that's what you're going to see as a common thread, is if you make it so that the Delver deck cannot efficiently be the better tempo, gain tempo on you, then you will win the game. So we're going to go ahead and play our Noble Hierarch, 
and we're gonna attack here for six damage as well as cast the geist it's pretty good he is gonna go ahead and pyroclasm now he's gonna be making some mistakes here and at least what I would consider mistakes uh, in in my humble opinion and if you guys are Delver players and you want to correct me feel free he ends up playing a lot more of a control deck rather than a tempo deck he's playing like a lot of removal to deal with my creatures and the the truth is a pyroclasm just doesn't get rid of my nether roll he doesn't get rid of my um my my goifs doesn't get rid of my uh even it could get rid of my um voice of resurgence but it doesn't get rid of it rid of it because i still get a token out of it so while pyroclasm was a two for one here and we're back maybe I'm still probably ahead of him in card advantage because I still have a Knight of the Royal Curry at least and he, he still has at least four cards in hand he can maybe do something with it I've got a Keswick Wolf run out though and I know that's going to eventually give me the game you'll see I actually passed the turn I know he has removal in hand for the, the Knight I don't know what removal he has in hand yet he could have a Terminate or he could have a Snapcaster flash in flashback bolt bolt my Knight and then block and then I can't, you know, that kills it. Either way, I want to make sure that I get some advantage off of off of this knight. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait because I I have a um I have a uh, a, a, a step that I can use. Uh, plus, it's my only it's my only threat at this point. So it's it's more important for me to conserve my threat than to just blow it um, right now. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and wait. When he doesn't do anything at end of turn, I realize oh. I, I take a minute to think about it. What has he got? Is, is Am I going to tap the knight and he's just going to terminate it? Is that what's going to happen? But no, reading his mana and seeing how he made sure to spend uh, everything but the bolt in his graveyard and made sure to only have this mana open, which, P.S., this is blue, anything, and a red. Um, it's pretty clear he's got the Snapcaster bolt. So I go, okay, I know he's got the Snapcaster Bolt. That's how he's going to beat me. So I'm going to go ahead and um, and fetch here. I'm just going to thin out my library so that way I make sure I draw a threat next turn. Oh, cool, I draw a threat next turn. Here I'm going to go ahead and offer it. And the reason why I'm going to offer it here is because I'm thinking, okay, he's going to have to Snapcaster Bolt in order to stop it. So he's going to have to... Uh, he can't block with the Snapcaster because I read his attack here. I knew that if he blocked with the Snapcaster and he bolted me, it would be 5 damage. So as long as I went for a fetch land and I'm now at 7, I'm okay with 1-for-1 one one trading my Knight for his Delve guy. He's going to be left with a 2-1 uh, attacker. I'm going to be with a 3-3, three, three, and arguably I draw better than he does, plus Keswick Wolf Run, so I'm going to be able to do more damage. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm okay with trading the Knight at this point. I'm going to gain the value off of this trade, not him. But he has to do this to survive. So cool. I'm going to go ahead and trample over for two here. Uh, sorry, for three. And that's going to bring his life total down. Because again, this trample is just going to eventually kill him. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I keep one mana open to put my, my Nicodle in here. The minute I went ahead and saw him tap an island for Seer and Vision, I, w I said, alright, this game's pretty much over. He's searching for an answer. Anytime you see a Delver guy start chaining together um, Serum Visions, it means they, they don't have a good answer for this. So, already reading that his answer was not just a bolt, um, he, he instead... Because if it was just a bolt, if he had a bolt in hand, he would have never paid the second mana for the, the, um, the Angler. He would have just killed the bolt in his yard, and then he would have bolted and then have mana to snap bolt again. And that would have been the more efficient way. So I read his mana correctly. I knew he didn't have the bolt in hand, uh, so he's gonna have to. And he didn't have a, a, a he didn't have a um, terminate either in hand because he would have then done his mana differently. Like I said, so he would have he would have waited on it. So he doesn't have those answers. So I know that this Nicodle is gonna come down and it's gonna stay down. And he's gonna search for an answer. And if he doesn't have it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attack and he's gonna block, which is gonna be doesn't really matter anyways. And I'm just gonna trample forward for an extra three, four, five damage to put him down to one. And then he ends up giving up. So with this attack, I know 100% because we've already decided that he doesn't have a bolt in hand based on reading his mana and the way he does things. That He's attacking here, so I block. He might have something, something to uh, power up his his Snapcaster. He might have something to to make it so that my block's uh, bad. Maybe he has a I don't know something like a um, 
disfigure. I'm not sure. But in the end, he's hoping that he can get something off of this attack. That's a pretty desperate attack, and I'm not going to let it go down. So I'm just going to go ahead and not block, and then he's just going to concede. Um, so that's how that game went. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a hand, and I decide to keep this hand. It's a little bit sketchy, but I, the, my reasoning for keeping this hand is because I've got a Rock Spore Monk in hand. While I can't cast it yet, I will eventually be able to cast it. And I've got a Collected Company. Collected Company is going to do enough to, to get me aggressive, but the hand is pretty clear. Removal spell, removal spell. Start up on a removal spell. Cast Rock Spore Monk if I have the ability to. And then cash it in Collected Company and start beating down now that I've opened up a, a window. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I end up drawing a Nakatl here, and I go, alright, cool, now I have a clock to present to my um, to my removal spells. That's the way I'm going to play a better tempo game than he's going to play. And that's exactly what I do. I attack for th this. Yeah, I go ahead and I make sure to leave up the mana. I even pay for it to pretend that I've got a Gork Clan Rampager or something in, in my hand. And he falls for it. He lets me attack. I beat his attack here. And um, at the end of turn, he bolts. So I, it, we're a parody here. Uh, I've I've... There's this. This is parody, or at least it's even maybe not even parody because he spent some time drawing cards and manipulating his library, while I've, I've at least put something on the board and I've got more cards in hand than he does. So it's not actually parody. I'm playing the better tempo deck than him right now. He's gonna start chaining the other serum visions and stuff. It's pretty clear that he's gonna go for the uh, the straight up angler here because of that. And I'm just gonna path to exile that thing right away. We put out the um, the Knight of the Valkyrie. The Knight of the Valkyrie can die by bolt. I knew that, but that was all that I could cast with the cards that I had in hand, um, because this this doesn't tap for a green. Um, but I put it out into play, and the fact that he took his turn and casted Leylina of Void, something that is pretty good against my knight, but not super great against the rest of my deck. I've already sided out a combo that uses the graveyard. Um, it's pretty clear he doesn't have a bolt here, so I'm free to attack with this guy, and that's what he, that's what knight is going to do best. Guy. Girl. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just start trying to be as aggressive as humanly possible. In fact, I'm going to do the collect company before he has the counter mana right now on my turn to see what I can grab. Maybe I'll grab an exalted person, and I do. I end up grabbing a noble hierarch, and that's going to make my knight be attacking for four, as well as my geist that's going to stick around because he's obviously got removal or something. Um, better on my end. All right, cool. He's going to pyre class him. That's definitely a two for one. But the difference between that two for ones is that he's at 11 life and got two cards in hand. I've got four cards in hand, I'm at 15 life, and I have a creature on the board. So arguably, my board state, my hand, my life total is all better than him. Again, I'm playing the better tempo deck than he's playing. So I'm going to go ahead and just attack here. i got no reason to, to search out for something. I guess if I wanted to be cute, I could bolt and put the Nakatl out as well as... Um, uh, I could probably uh, put the Nakatl out as well as put out the Ro Rock's War Monk, but I'm just going to use my mana efficiently, and I'm going to make him go down to closer to lower life so that my two lightning bolts can finish him off if he ever cracks a fetch land or something. He's going to go ahead and delve his secrets here. I decide I don't need to bolt the Delver, and my re main reason for not needing to bolt the Delver, even though it's going to block here, is if he's got removal spells, it makes that bolt a little worse. He's going to have to block. He's going to be at four life after I bolt him, and this means death. Plus, I've got Trample. So I'm going to go ahead and attack here, and he's going to end up blocking. After seeing that he's used the Terminate on my... Um, on my uh, on my knight, I don't know. He's got one mana open. He could still bolt. I've got no reason to pump my Kessick Wolf run. He's still in a pretty crappy situation, where at the end of this trade, if I just say go ahead, no 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 trampling over, uh, even though I could have won the game on this, I chose the safer play of just not doing anything. Uh, even if he bolted at end of turn, I'd still have a Geist of St. Traft out. That can't be bolted. It would have to be snap blocked. And I can still trample over, plus the four damage that's going to be in the air. So I, I know that I've, I've got the lead here, plus I've still got a bolt. So I've got no reason to take the risky play and win right now, when I can take the safe play and win next turn. And that's exactly what I'm going to end up doing. And then he's going to go ahead and just concede, because he doesn't have the answer to the Geist. So, again, I was playing the better tempo game here. I was not letting him, in this this time... I was not letting him out-tempo me. I was one-for-wanting him as equally as he was one-for-wanting me. His one-for-ones were exactly that. They were parody. They weren't better than, than what I was playing. And I was just able to get more uh, virtual card advantage in by... and straight-up card advantage in by using things like um, 
Collected Company, as well as my Keswick Wolf run. So that's how you beat the uh, Delver decks. Uh, I hope that was... I know it was a little bit um, more uh, s philosophical than it normally is, trying to tell you guys how to beat a Delver deck as a genre of decks, rather than how to beat them with just specific sideboard cards. Um, but I hope that helps you understand the tempo matchup and how you as an aggro player uh, need to look at your opening hand and decide what you're going to be playing, how you're going to beat this tempo deck as a whole, and um, be able to efficiently uh, use that attack plan. I hope it helped, guys. As always, you can reach me with YouTube comments. I always answer back, or if I don't answer back, I at least look at it, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the feedback that you're giving me. Um, I also... Uh, will be always be on the zoo thread if you want to talk to me just specifically about zoo and if you want to talk to me about delver too please go ahead um and the zoo thread you can always find an mtg salvation in the modern sub forum uh and you can just find the zoo thread there right now it's currently in tier two but it should be in tier one very shortly um and as always, you can like and subscribe to the video if you want more future content just about aggro in general, as well as matchup guides and zoo, which is my primary forte. And remember, guys, always feed the animals.